Our world is heating up. It's already warmed by one degree since pre-industrial times, and global carbon dioxide emissions are still rising. As policy efforts to curb emissions fail, some scientists say it is time to try a new tack. What if we could find ways to pull the carbon dioxide out of the air and then store it underground? One such strategy is the Ideal Plant concept, a project led by the Salk Institute in La Jolla, California. This group wants to design plants that will be able to store more carbon in their roots. Plants already capture carbon dioxide from the air, storing carbon in their bodies as they grow. But most of this carbon is returned to the atmosphere when they decompose. The Salk team believes they can change this by using a tiny molecule called suberin, a cork-like substance that does not decompose easily. By engineering plants with more suberin in their roots, more carbon would stay in the soil. They hope to develop ideal plants with roots that are deeper, more massive, and contain more suberin. They recently made a breakthrough, discovering genes that can do all three of these things in a mustard-like plant called Arabidopsis. The task now is to see whether those genes can work the same way in other plants. The Salk team is starting research on crop plants, including soya beans, corn, wheat, cotton, and rice. A prototype ideal plant could be produced within five years, the group says, and large-scale rollout could happen in a decade. There are challenges, however. Would the world really accept genetically engineered plants on such a large scale? And how would soils be impacted by all these big, suberin-filled roots? The scientists estimate that if half the total acreage of all six major crops had ideal traits, this might sequester one-fifth of annual man-made carbon dioxide emissions. That's a lot of ideal plants. But as global carbon dioxide emissions keep rising, even the more unorthodox ideas are starting to be taken seriously.